I spoke via Skype with uh, Thomas Berger. He's a professor of international relations at Boston University and an expert in Japanese politics. I asked him about China's concerns that Japanese nationalism is on the rise. Well, I don't think nationalism is anything necessarily new in Japan, but um, certainly the Abe administration, um, the administration of Prime Minister Abe Shinzo, has a particular strongly conservative um, view on uh, Japanese nationalism and is trying to foster it. So are you saying that this rise of nationalism in Japan or this renewed rise of nationalism as we are seeing it right now is being driven mainly by domestic politics in Japan? No, I think it's actually being driven uh, at least as much by international politics as by uh, domestic politics. Many Japanese, and not just ones on the left, tend to blame um, a kind of exaggerated, overheated nationalism uh, for having been, um, or having been exploited by the Japanese militarists and leading them into a very destructive uh, war. So if you actually take a look at Japanese public opinion, if you take a look at Japanese anime films, novels, so forth, you'll see that there's actually a strong sentiment of anti-nationalism. At the same time, however, there is a strong conservative trend of opinion in Japan which feels that the liberals have gone too far in Japan. They feel that uh, Japan has uh, lost its sense of national identity and uh, uh, that, as a result, it isn't able to stand up to its, uh, for itself and for its own interests. And Abe, I think, very much reflects that particular set of views. Uh, and one of the reasons I think that Abe uh, has been uh, returned to office is because of the crisis over the Senkaku Diaoyu Islands. Right, you know, looking at the broader picture yet, China has complained to the United States about the rise of Japanese nationalism, but it would appear that Washington is not getting involved here. In fact, uh, the Obama administration said that they do not have a position on the disputed islands. Why is the United States adopting a hands-off attitude here? Well, I would be careful to describe, I would, wouldn't quite describe it as a hands-off attitude. The U.S. Uh, pushes very strongly, and this has been reaffirmed multiple times, over the last few months with reference to the Senkaku Diaoyu Island issue, um, uh, that any such dis differences have to be uh, resolved peacefully uh, and in accordance with international law. So, uh, you know, if uh, Japan and uh, China uh, can come to some kind of understanding or agreement regarding uh, the Senkaku Diaoyu Islands, the U.S. is happy with that or could accept that as long as that's done uh, in a, a peaceful manner. So I wouldn't exactly call it a hands-off position. Now, the other thing, though, which I want to, uh, we shouldn't completely conflate the Senkaku Diaoyu issues with the nationalist issues. Um, the U.S. is um, concerned by some of the statements that Abe has made. But the U.S. has been very concerned about the way in which tensions have been risen, raised in the region by some of Abe's comments um, regarding uh, the comfort women. And again, this is not something that the U.S. wants to, you know, take, make a big and open uh, issue with its ally in, in Tokyo. But uh, we feel that it's been uh, not very helpful for Abe, to put it mildly, to take that kind of position. Thomas Berger there talking to me earlier.